Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Kevin Bain. I'm a general surgery resident at NYU Langone Hospital Brooklyn campus in New York. And as mentioned today, I'll be talking about laparoscopy and penetrating abdominal trauma as a safe and effective alternative to laparotomy. Uh, we have no conflicts of interest or financial ties to disclose. So the evaluation and management of penetrating abdominal trauma has greatly improved over the past several decades. Laparotomy has been traditionally viewed as the gold standard for managing these patients. However, as laparoscopy has become the standard of care in other surgical fields, its utility in trauma has also been increasingly investigated. So exploratory laparotomy and penetrating abdominal trauma has been associated with non-therapeutic rates of up to 61%, and this opened the door for exploring laparoscopy. Uh, however, laparoscopy was initially criticized due to the increased risk of missing injuries. Um, Originally, uh, rates were documented as high as 13%, but with advances in both technology and surgical experience, those rates have dropped to as low as 0.12%. Uh, so in our study, we aim to analyze the use of diagnostic laparoscopy in patients who presented to our level one trauma center with penetrating abdominal trauma. We also provide clear definitions and clarify a systematic stepwise approach of how to effectively perform both diagnostic and therapeutic laparoscopy. So for definitions, screening laparoscopy is the assessment for peritoneal violation. Uh, once you have confirmed this, you progress to diagnostic laparoscopy, which is a systematic inspection of the peritoneal cavity and retroperitoneal organs. This is considered a non-therapeutic procedure where either no uh, injuries are identified or those that are identified do not require a repair. And then obviously a therapeutic laparoscopy is when you perform an advanced maneuver to uh, repair uh, injury. Uh, simple maneuvers such as organ mobilization, clot evacuation, or uh, application of a hemostatic agent uh, should not be considered therapeutic laparoscopy. So this was a retrospective study of patients who presented to our hospital between December 2006 and September 2016 with penetrating abdominal trauma. Our inclusion criteria was hemodynamic stability, patients greater than 12 years of age, and patients initially treated with laparoscopy. Our exclusion criteria included hemodynamic instability, uh, patients less than 12 years of age, those with organ evisceration on presentation, and patients who underwent immediate laparotomy. So 56 patients met criteria, and they were divided into three groups, the diagnostic laparoscopy group, diagnostic with conversion to therapeutic laparoscopy, and diagnostic with conversion to exploratory laparotomy. So for procedure outline, we start first with port placement and assessing the abdominal cavity. Next, we move to quick control of any sources of intra-abdominal bleeding. Then we perform a stepwise examination of both intraperitoneal and retroperitoneal organs. And lastly, once an injury is identified, the decision for therapeutic intervention. So these figures are depictions from a recent publication by Koto et al. Uh, the figure on the left is our recommended port placement, which we uh, adapted from their, their literature. Uh, we recommend starting with the green ports. Uh, we start with a supra umbilical camera port, and then we place two working ports uh, in the midclavicular line, uh, several centimeters below the costal margin. And additional ports can be placed in the blue figures um, as needed for both diagnostic and therapeutic maneuvers. And the figure on the right uh, is basically a depiction showing the stepwise examination uh, in order to examine all potential injured viscera and all spaces in order to uh, systematically uh, approach uh, the abdomen and make sure that you reduce missed injuries. So we define certain criteria uh, that we believe will help optimize your results and allow for the most beneficial uh, therapeutic laparoscopy. Uh, the first thing to consider is obviously surgeon experience. Uh, an expert laparoscopist must be able to perform advanced laparoscopic maneuvers uh, such as running the small bowel, mobilizing the retroperitoneum, and suturing hollow viscous organs. The next things that we consider are mechanisms surrounding the trauma itself. Uh, trauma to the anterior abdomen or thoracoabdominal region that's caused by a low to medium velocity penetrating object and that has a clear trajectory pattern upon exploration and mobilization. These features will help uh, optimize your results and, and we believe will make you know, for successful therapeutic laparoscopy. And the last thing to consider is uh, with, with certain injuries, particularly small bowel and retroperitoneal retro organ injuries, uh, these are very difficult to uh, manage. Even in the hands of a skilled laparoscopist, these are difficult to manage. Uh, so we think that it's important to give careful consideration as to whether or not you proceed laparoscopically or you decide to convert to laparotomy with these injuries. 
So for our results, uh, we had 56 patients, 10 of which were converted to laparotomy for a conversion rate of 17.9%, and the remaining 46 were treated with laparoscopy alone. Uh, 13 patients underwent therapeutic laparoscopy, and 33 patients underwent diagnost la diagnostic laparoscopy alone. And this is important because a non-therapeutic laparotomy was avoided in these 33 patients for a, a non-therapeutic rate of 58.9%. So we evaluated uh, baseline demographics and characteristics of our patients. We evaluated mean age, BMI, uh, GCS in the three groups, and there were similar between the three groups. And then we used trauma scoring system, both the injury severity score as well as the penetrating abdominal trauma index. And as you can see, the groups that required therapeutic maneuvers obviously had higher scores on these scaling systems, indicating uh, the severity of their trauma was more significant. And so the outcomes that we looked at, uh, we looked at post-operative complications, including surgical site infections, pneumonia, DVT, PE, and ileus. In the diagnostic laparoscopy group, we had one hospital-acquired pneumonia and one post-op ileus that required prolonged NPO status. And in the diagnostic with conversion to laparotomy group, we had a surgical site infection, a deep surgical site infection, which required a take back to the operating room, and it was found to have uh, an anastomotic leak at a site of previous colon resection. Of note, uh, in all three groups, there were no missed injuries, and mortality was, there were no mortalities in any of the three groups as well. And the last thing that we looked at uh, was mean hospital length of stay. And as you can see, the two groups that were managed with laparoscopy uh, had significantly shorter lengths of stay when compared to the, the group that had conversion to laparotomy. So overall, our study adds to the body of literature that shows laparoscopy can be safely and effectively utilized in patients with penetrating abdominal trauma. We show that Diagnostic laparoscopy can be converted to therapeutic laparoscopy in the hands of a skilled surgeon, and we define criteria that helps optimize your results. And we also show that uh, laparoscopy can be converted to laparotomy without delay. The use of laparoscopy allows for shorter hospital lengths of stay and is not associated with any increased postoperative complications or mortalities. And most importantly, diagnostic laparoscopy decreases the rate of non-therapeutic laparotomies. Thank you.